Hi there, and welcome to Beauty in Black and White. I'm Gordon Miller, beauty business guy and social media and web aficionado, and I'm here because I love to share. And today, I want to share a big idea from a must-read book for anybody who aspires to success as a salon owner, and that's Michael Gerber's best-selling, eye-opening e-myth, The Myth of the Entrepreneur, why most businesses, including salons and barbershops, are not successful, and what to do about it. Here's a somewhat paraphrased excerpt from the introduction to the book. To understand the myth of the entrepreneur and the misunderstanding at its core, let's take a closer look at the person who goes into business. If you're like most, you were or are working for somebody else, probably doing technical work like most everybody who goes into small business. You were a carpenter, a mechanic, a bookkeeper, or a hairdresser or barber who was doing technical work, and you were probably damn good at it, but you were doing it for somebody else. And then something happened. It might have been the weather, a big birthday, or your child's graduation from high school, or, or maybe a feeling that your boss didn't really appreciate your contribution to the success of his business. And one day, you were suddenly stricken with an entrepreneurial seizure. And from that day on, your life has never been the same. Inside your mind, it sounded something like this. Why am I working for this guy? Hell, I know as much about this business as he does. If it wasn't for me, he wouldn't even have a business. Any dummy can run a business. I'm working for one. And the moment you paid attention to what you were thinking, your fate was sealed. The excitement of cutting the cord became your constant companion. The thought of independence followed you everywhere. The idea of being your own boss, doing your own thing, became accepted obsessively irresistible. You, you had to start your own business. You fell victim to the most disastrous assumption anyone can make about going into business. The fatal assumption is that if you understand the technical work of a business, then you also understand the business that sells that technical work. And the reason it's fatal is that it just isn't true. In fact, it's the root cause of most small business failure. The technical work of your business and the business itself are two totally different things. But the stylist or barber who starts their own business too often fails to see this. To the stylist suffering an entrepreneurial seizure, a business is not necessarily a business to work on, but a place to go to work in. So the barber opens a barbershop, the hairdresser starts the salon, all believing that by understanding the technical work of the business, they are also eminently qualified to manage the business. Not true. In fact, rather than being your single greatest asset, knowing the technical work will likely become your single greatest liability. For if the owner didn't know how to do the technical work, she'd be forced as an owner to learn how to make the business work rather than doing the work behind the chair herself. What happens instead is that the business that was supposed to free you from the limitations of working for somebody else actually enslaves you. Suddenly the job you knew how to do so well becomes the one job you know how to do out of half a dozen other owner jobs that you have to do. And suddenly an entrepreneurial dream turns into a hairdresser's nightmare. Taking the work that you love to do and turning it into a job. The work that was born out of love becomes a chore, one of a long list of other less familiar and less pleasant chores. Rather than maintaining its specialness, representing the unique skill that you possess, the technical work becomes trivialized, something to get through in order to make room for everything else that must be done as an owner. Or per perhaps worse yet, the owner's work doesn't get done, while the owner instead does her stylist work, because it's what she does best. The big reality is that too many salon owners are too busy behind the chair, too often doing the work of the business instead of taking enough time to work on the business, something that starts by taking the time to learn how to be a great manager, a great marketer, and a great mentor to those who work for and with you. Or, and, and or, know how to delegate to those who can. Most small businesses in America struggle and most salons today are not profitable or are marginally so. The E-Myth is a book that helps to explain why so many owners and independent renters struggle and what it takes of you to be a more successful salon owner in today's world. If you're serious about working on your business, I recommend this book highly. And that's it for today. Sorry for being a little long. 
Um, I uh, thank you for being here. Again, my name is Gordon Miller. This has been Beauty in Black and White. I look forward to talking with you again next time.